From across Southern Nevada to where you live, this is a special edition of News 13 Inside Las Vegas. Folks from one Nevada town are heading home right now after wildfires forced half of them to leave. And this afternoon, we're learning more about what caused the fires. The U.S. military now has custody of a man accused of plotting a terrorist attack using what's called a radioactive dirty bomb. Plus, the feds give Nevada millions of dollars to beef up our state's ability to respond to bioterrorism. In fact, we're one of the first states to have an anti-terror plan approved by the federal government. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Ray. And I'm Ross Becker. Welcome to the special edition of News 13 here at 4 o'clock. Well, the news came this morning from Governor Kenny Gwynn and top officials from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. News 13's Mark Sayers in the newsroom right now. And Mark, how is this going to keep us safer? Well, Ross, the feds are giving Nevada $10 million to do things like hire people, add laboratories here in southern Nevada, and generally just beef up the state's infrastructure to deal with future threats of bioterrorism. You are looking at the only public health lab in Southern Nevada, but this lab handles only venereal diseases, not the kind of bioterrorism threats that the nation is facing right now. Anything more serious, like anthrax, and it must be shipped to a state lab in Northern Nevada. Now, the feds are giving the Clark County Health District $2.3 million to build a full capability lab. The turnaround time was, was uh, uh, too long. Now we'll be able to do it in a number of hours, so to speak, and thereby allay the anxiety of people that may have been exposed and everything else, rather than a day, day and a half. But this $10 million federal grant goes beyond just a new lab, and federal health officials say it should actually put Nevada ahead of the curve when it comes to responding to potential terrorism. I believe that today we are making history. This is the first time that the private sector, federal, state, and local governments have created a unified plan for responding to public health emergencies resulting from terrorism. In addition to the lab, the funding will also pay for a new statewide director of Homeland Security, bioterrorism planners at all levels of government, and improved disease monitoring and communications networks. So I think these dollars will go a long ways towards us depicting exactly what our program will be and should be for the protection of our people throughout this state. Now, as for the statewide director of Homeland Security, Governor Kenny Gwynn says he does not have a top candidate at this point. He does say that he believes that Sheriff Jerry Keller, who of course will be retiring, leaving the sheriff's job in November, would be an excellent choice. But at this point, the sheriff is still the sheriff until the November election. That obviously a key hire to be looking for in the months ahead. That is the story from the newsroom. I'm Mark Sayer, News 13 inside Las Vegas. Attorney General John Ashcroft says a man is in custody who was planning to detonate a dirty bomb that would have spread radioactive substances throughout the U.S. Ashcroft says Abdullah al muhajir is in the custody of U.S. military and he's being treated as an enemy combatant. He was born here in the United States as Jose Padilla. He later changed his name when he converted to Islam. Ashcroft says he was arrested May 8th at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. We have a man Airport. detained who is a threat to the country. And that, uh, thanks to the vigilance of our uh, intelligence gathering and law enforcement, he is now uh, off the streets where he should be. There are reportedly no plans to charge or try Padilla, but he will be detained by the military for the duration of the war on terrorism. So, what exactly? a dirty bomb. Well, it's conventional explosives wrapped by radioactive material like spent nuclear reactor fuel rods. When the device is detonated, the resulting explosion isn't much greater than normal. However, because of the nuclear core, a large zone of intense radiation is created and that can cause many more casualties. Today, Senator Harry Reid says these kinds of terror weapons would be much easier to create if Yucca Mountain is passed and nuclear waste is traveling throughout our country. Well, now to the labor confrontation here at home. Talks between the downtown casino attorneys and culinary union officials apparently are going downhill. Yeah, so the big question is, can an agreement be reached before the July 1st strike deadline? News 13's Tiffany Sargent is at the culinary union headquarters right now. She's got the latest for us. Tiffany. Yes, the big debate here continues over health care coverage, and it's concerning big money. And while the uh, culinary officials, uh, union officials that is, they say that they want the same deal that they got from resorts on the Strip, the uh, casino reps from downtown say that they want to compromise because they say that the money just is not there. 
flower blooms curbside in downtown Las Vegas. This as nearly 8,000 workers are set to strike if a deal is not reached by July 1st. Years ago, it was a place to work downtown. And a lot of people that are downtown have been in the, in the union for 25, 30, 40 years. Attorneys for downtown casinos say recent talks came to a halt when they and union negotiators could not settle a misunderstanding. Meantime, Sal Gugino of Castaway says negotiations will continue on Friday. We are intent on negotiating a contract with the Culinary Workers Union. Uh, we're going forward with our counter proposals and we're, we're going to make those presentations. But union officials say before they'll give downtown casinos the green light, casinos will have to accept their health care plan. The same plan voted on last week by union workers and agreed on by mega resorts on the Strip. It's estimated that that plan will cost the hotels on the Strip $650 million more than the current union contract that expired May 31st. Downtown casino reps say there's no way they can pay that, but it does not mean they will not provide health care. We're talking about providing insurance coverage, in fact, very good insurance coverage for everybody. Uh, the difference is that uh, it wouldn't be necessarily be uh, the union's plan. Still, union workers say one union one plan. If it's all one union, we should all, you know, have the same uh, equal rights and opportunities for all the workers. Well, at this time, culinary union officials say they are in talks with the stratosphere and come Friday, they will meet again with the eight gaming properties from downtown. And on June 17th, they plan to meet with Boyd Gaming. Meantime, the strike deadline still looms at July the 1st. We're live at the Culinary Union. I'm Tiffany Sargent, News 13, inside Las Vegas. Well, that is a deadline, and there's no official strike yet in the Culinary Union, but there is another union picketing in Las Vegas. We're into the fourth week now of the amalgamated transit union strike against ATC Vancom. After a brief flirt with some kind of a deal, the two sides have now stopped negotiating, and they, they seem to be at a standstill. Replacement drivers have been brought in, but even the best estimates have only 70% of the buses on the roads, and that's from the RTC. Nevada firefighters are hard at work for a third day now, battling a 1,500-acre wildfire near Pioche. Right now, it's about 70% contained. Pioche is a Lincoln County mining town. It's near the Utah border, 190 miles north of Las Vegas. 20 volunteer firefighters from Clark County are among the hundreds battling the blaze there. Though half of the town was evacuated over the weekend, authorities today say people can return home. No houses are destroyed. No injuries have been reported. The wildfire has taken out some out buildings, abandoned cabins and vehicles. And now officials say the fire apparently was started by a rodent that came into contact with a power line. We don't know yet what caused a three alarm fire at a local apartment complex. Flames broke out shortly after 11 o'clock last night at the old Jolly Manor Apartments and the Diplomat Complex. The buildings were vacant and they were set to be torn down for the expansion of the Las Vegas Convention Center. Investigators believe the fire may have been started by vagrants who are camping out in those buildings. A 15 year old Las Vegas girl missing for a week now is back home tonight. Take a look at her. This is Nira Baeza. Police say she was on the run with a 27-year-old man. But this weekend, officers found the pair at a house in downtown Las Vegas. Carlos Andre Matut is now under arrest, facing several charges, including statutory sexual seduction, kidnapping, attempted burglary, and attempted home invasion. Police tell us they found them partly from tips from viewers who say they saw Baeza and Matut saw their pictures right here on television. Now, meanwhile, it's been five days since Elizabeth Smart was snatched from her Salt Lake City home, but uh, no one is giving up hope just yet. Thousands of volunteers continued searching near the family's home today. Meanwhile, the FBI is reviewing results from a polygraph test given to Elizabeth's father, Ed Smart. They say no one is being ruled out at this point, even the close relatives. The girl's uncle, Tom Smart, asked volunteers with all-terrain vehicles to help search a desert, desert rather wash area just west of Salt Lake. Every day we want to have a place where we can do one search because take nothing for granted in this and we're going to search every inch of this state and beyond if we need to until we bring her home. Police are frustrated by the thousands of tips they've received, none of which are panning out. They say they're no closer to solving this case and finding her than they were five days ago. Hmm. Well, get ready for a rare show in the sky. Here in Southern Nevada, we're pretty lucky enough to have one of the best views of the solar eclipse beginning 
just about 60 minutes from now. Now, when the sun, moon, and earth all line up, the earth passes through the moon's shadow, creating a solar eclipse. From the earth, the sun seems to be swallowed up. During a partial solar eclipse, only a portion of the sun is covered by the moon. Coming up today at 4.30, Brandon Rue is live at the planetarium with more on the best methods and times to see this uh, big event. Well, you know, parents have always been very vigilant trying to mm -hmm. keep their kids safe. But in the active summer months, it's tougher to keep children injury-free. Contact 13 has some timely advice on preventing injury. And wedding bells will ring for Sir Paul. We're going to tell you who made uh, tomorrow's wedding guest list. Nathan Tannenbaum with Weather Center. No clouds to obscure your view of the eclipse. And we'll take a look at triple digits returning to the forecast in a few minutes. Researchers have made a new discovery about the deadliest form of skin cancer. I'm Heather Angel. We'll show you what you need to know to protect your family. That story's coming up. Now with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Ross Becker, Kathy Ray, Nathan Tannenbaum with your complete forecast, and Trisha Keene with Contact 13. This is News 13 inside Las Vegas. Welcome back, and of course we keep learning more and more all the time. Scientists researching skin cancer now say there may be a genetic link. Yeah, Ross, this study focused on melanoma. Of course, that's the deadliest mm -hmm. form of skin cancer. The health team's Heather Angel says that information we already know about skin cancer may be more important than ever before. We have to pay attention, don't we, Heather? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Melanoma is a very serious disease. It kills nearly 40,000 people worldwide every year. Now, we've probably all heard that the sun can cause skin cancer. Now, scientists know this connection more, even more. Lorena Lacasse says before she lets her children, Eric and Ashlyn, outside to play, she covers them with sunblock. It would just cut down on the effects of the sun over the long period of time so that they wouldn't get, end up with any sort of cancers. Protecting skin from the sun, a good idea, especially in light of new findings about melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. Researchers with the Cancer Genome Project say 70% of melanoma cases are linked to change in a certain gene. We believe it's a spontaneous mutation that uh, is related to frequent sun exposure. Imagine these boxes are your DNA. Dr. Sanchez says when the sun's radiation hits your DNA, it damages it. Now, most people have what's called a DNA repair enzyme, and it puts your DNA back together. In some people, the DNA repair enzyme system is broken down, so the DNA isn't fixed, and you get these repeated uh, DNA uh, uh, mutations that add up and transform the cell into a cancer. Dr. Sanchez says while melanoma is the most lethal form of skin cancer, it's highly curable if detected early. Here are signs to look for asymmetry, moles that have one side mismatched to the other or that have an abnormal surface that's flaky or scaly, borders that are uneven or blurred, and color variation, moles with uneven color or multiple shades. Dr. Sanchez says early detection is key, but the best medicine is prevention. And this latest discovery is published in the online version of the journal Nature. The good news is researchers say these findings may lead to more effective drugs to fight melanoma. Kathy? We can't be too careful, Heather. Thank you. More from the health team tonight. It seems methamphetamine is very popular among women and it's growing in popularity. Meth as it's known, produces a high that's similar to cocaine. And law enforcers suspect that many women use it and are better able to conceal it compared to men. Female meth abusers say the drug gives them more energy, helps them to feel more efficient, but doctors say meth indeed can be deadly. And also from the health team, pregnant women often have a tough time sleeping. Well, now doctors think they know why or perhaps another reason. It seems when fetuses go into the deepest forms of sleep during the third trimester, it can keep mom awake. That's because during REM sleep, the heart rate increases and so do the body movements. And that keeps the mothers awake. Well, Nate Tannenbaum's here with the weather. And on Sunday, I had this little flag by my house, and you could see it went from one to the other side, and all of a sudden, the temperature went down. Oh, amazing. When the temperature started dropping, it's actually been fairly comfortable. Isn't it beautiful? Hasn't it? And I think the good news for the, over the weekend was the wind wasn't as bad as we That's predicted. Right. No, it definitely it was kind of annoying, but that high <laughs> wind warning over the weekend was canceled, and we're just kind of sitting pretty right now, waiting for the other side of the temperature roller coaster. In other words, it's going to start going up here, but fairly slowly. 
fairly comfortably. Take a look outside for you right now. Stratocam seeing nothing but blue sky here at 4 o'clock. Yeah, the news on a little bit early. We got the, um, the hockey game coming up at 5. And we're going to have a lot more about the solar eclipse with Brandon Rue out live at the Community College Planetarium. But just so you know, it should be peaking about 10 minutes past 6 this evening. 86 degrees for you right now. Humidity is at 14 percent. There is really no wind to talk about right now and the browner is continuing to fall at 29.78. We'll check other temperatures around right now. Laughlin is at 95. Kingman into the upper 80s. Just about everybody else in the 80s. No report from Mount Charleston. The M stands for missing. But we know there are a lot of temperatures that are not missing here in town. Very comfortable though. It wasn't too long ago. I guess it was one day last week that Henderson was 112. At uh, this hour, well, they're at 92 right now. Nellis, you guys are at 89. North Las Vegas, you're enjoying a comfortable 84, 85 for Summerlin. And the National Weather Service checking in at those upper 80-degree readings as well. Now, all of these are going to slowly climb. Some neighborhoods may be closer to triple digits tomorrow, but we don't think that's officially going to happen until uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Started out in the 20s up in Ely today. They're at 67 right now. Here's our 86. Uh, the Mile High City is at 71, but boy, there are some raging wildfires throughout western Colorado and getting closer to the metropolitan area there with a lot of evacuations. Right now, Phoenix at 99 and cloud wise really nothing to talk about this low pressure system finally starting to move to the east so those very strong winds that we had over the weekend are now bothering the folks over northern utah and parts of montana wyoming and colorado really the only change that we see coming here is that very slow warming trend we'll start with tonight for you the new moon so that's why the eclipse is going to be happening as the new moon moves in front of the sun mid 60s when you start the day tomorrow We'll say officially 94, but that'll be about a 10 degree jump from where we are today, so we'll see just how far we get. South breezes at times might be to 15 miles an hour. As always, if you're looking for more weather information, well, we've got it for you on the weather page of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Monday through Friday, we've been asking for readers to write in their questions about the weather. We're going to be answering one tomorrow about the dew point and exactly what that is and how it uh, should be interpreted or not even bothered with. <laughs> when we get together on News 13 at 4.30, yeah, there are some strong storms going on beneath that low-pressure system that we just got rid of. We'll show you where they are, find out if there are any watches or warnings that we need to be concerned about. And as always, the five-day forecast, it will include triple digits for just about all of us, certainly by the middle of the week, some neighborhoods a little bit sooner than others. And the overnight lows, very comfortably in the mid-60s, will be warming back to the lower 70s. We'll have all the numbers for you, Ross and Kathy. Okay, see you in a little bit, Thanks. Nate. Thank you. You know, when it comes to protecting your child near a swimming pool, you've probably seen it all. Yeah, you want to keep them safe, right? Pool covers, floaties, pool alarms, all that stuff. But now, an inventor has combined fashion and function to create a bathing suit that'll keep your kids afloat. Quite fashionable, and from the outside to inside, things in your home that seem harmless can turn deadly around little ones. Next Contact 13 has advice every parent should know about child-proofing your home. Now, with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Contact 13. You know, it's always a good time to think about how safe your house is, especially if you have little ones. Yeah, thousands of children are injured around the house every year, and the increases the more time those kids spend out in the yard playing during the summer months. Contact 13's Trisha Keen shows us how many of these potential injuries can be prevented. you take for granted like a stairway, fireplace, or electrical outlet look like an adventure through a child's eyes. But that could lead your child into the emergency room. Most injuries or accidents are from common household items, sharp objects, heavy objects, things that people don't think about every day. About two and a half million children are injured or even killed by hazards in the home each year. That's according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Many of these accidents can be prevented by using simple child safety devices like safety latches and locks for cabinets, outlet covers, and safety gates. We were hearing from parents that uh, a lot of the areas they have in the house to protect aren't your usual straight line type of areas, areas like a fireplace, places that a normal gate couldn't be installed. So we designed a gate that could be customized around those types of spaces so that parents could have the peace of mind to protect their children. Traditional walkers also pose a danger to kids by allowing them to wander off to a flight of stairs or into an unrestricted room. 
But activity sensors like this Ultra Saucer are another way to help parents keep their children entertained and safe if they're busy. And a new line of walkers lets kids walk without going anywhere. The Avon Flow walk around is what we call a rotating walker. Uh, it's a walker that's designed around a stationary leg and the walker actually pivots in a circle to keep the child in one area of the house. There are also hazards outside the house. Just look around the patio and the yard. Watch out for outdoor furniture, grills, steps, and be especially careful if you have a pool. There are more than 200 deaths a year in this country from backyard swimming pool accidents and one in a lifetime is one too many. For Contact 13, I'm Trisha Key, News 13, inside Las Vegas. And one company has a new product to keep your kids safe around the pool. It is called Floating Swimwear. And it comes in one-piece swimsuits designed for boys and girls ages two and up. The swimwear helps small children stay afloat using four chambers of flotation foam sewn right in between the layers of high-quality spandex. The foam won't puncture or deflate, and unlike those uh, ring floats that can do just that, those look really great. They're, they're not, they work very well, but they're so cute. They have yeah. different styles. and So they like to wear them. They like to wear them. So That's so. right. All right, yeah. well. He was the most notorious mobster in the country. Yes, the Teflon Don. Well, now he's dead. We're going to take a look back at the life of John Gotti. But first. I'm Brandon Rue, live at the Community College Observatory. Las Vegas, one of the best places in the world to view tonight's solar eclipse. We'll tell you how you can do it safely, even if you don't have these. Coming up next. Live. This is a special edition of News 13 inside Las Vegas. Three weeks into a strike by cat bus drivers, there are still no negotiations and passengers are paying the price. Plus, the man accused of stalking Steve Wynn appeared in court today. He says he's the casino mogul's brother. And in just about an hour, Nevadans are going to be looking to the skies for a peek at a celestial event that happens only every few years. And we are not talking about the invasion of UFOs. We are talking, of course, about a solar eclipse. Hello again, I'm Ross Becker. And I'm Kathy Ray. We are on early tonight because mm -hmm. of the Stanley Cup, which begins 5 o'clock tonight. Sorry. Well, it's not a self-promoting mentalist predicting tonight's <laughs> eclipse. Nope. nope. It's astronomers forecasting what's going to appear in our skies tonight for, sh for sure. News 13's Brandon Rue spoke with one of them today. He's out at CCSN's observatory right now. And Brandon, this does not happen every year, does it? No, Kathy. In fact, the next time us Earthlings will likely see one of these solar eclipses, not until the year 2005, even longer for us here in southern Nevada. Now, as Nate mentioned earlier, the peak is at about 610, but you can view tonight's solar eclipse from 530 through sunset. And folks out here at the community college say these solar shades are the only way to stare straight up at the sun. Well, the CCSN Planetarium has cornered the market and sold out of these safe sun specs. So if you don't have any of these, and you want to view this at home. There are ways of viewing the solar eclipse safely at home. 93 million miles under the burning sun. This guy cutting grass knows how hot it feels should also know to keep his eyes on the job and not the sun. Without filter on it, looking at the sun just for a brief second can burn a hole in the retina of your eye. Something that can't be fixed. Astronomer Bob Pippin is getting the Community College of Southern Nevada ready for visitors to safely view the partial solar eclipse. Okay. First, for anyone with a telescope, Pippin says remove your finder's scope. This is basically the light gathering ability of a pair of binoculars, which you look at the sun with a pair of binoculars, you will permanently injure your eye. Binoculars and cameras are prohibited. Solar filters are a must for any telescope pointed at the sun. It only lets one part in 10,000 of the energy of the sun of the light and heat to get into the telescope. If only the first astronomers knew this. Some people think the astronomer Galileo went blind because he tried to use his early, early telescope. What, no safe sun specs or telescope? Don't worry, think back to those early school uh, days. One of the ways we observe the sun is these pinhole projectors we talk about. A shoebox, aluminum foil, and a sheet of paper, and you're set. If you work outside or worship the sun, a solar eclipse is a good time to remind everyone... Never safe to look at the sun, just to look at it with just your eyes. If you're using optical aid, that's that much worse. 
I think right before the story, I was looking a little bit off camera because with these solar specs, you can look directly at the sun, but you can't see two feet in front of your face, unfortunately. Now, if you want to know more about building a pinhole projector at home, if you don't have the ability to come out here, just go online under any search engine, look up solar eclipse, and you can find instructions with any of your household items. Or you can come out here to the CCSN Cheyenne campus. They're setting up some telescopes with the solar filters or if you're lucky maybe i'll let you borrow my safe sun specs kathy it's a real nice look why don't you put them back on brandon i like <laughs> it a lot For, is a crowd expected out there tonight uh, they are expecting a crowd. They have three of these telescopes that they're pulling out here on the lawn, the front lawn here at CCSN. But as mentioned, they did sell out of their sun or safe solar specs. So that means a lot of people came here, paid two bucks to get them so they can watch them safely right Okay, the trend setter that you are. Have a good time out there. Be they safe. gave me the hot pink ones too. Very nice, very nice. Brandon Rue reporting live. Thanks. Other news tonight. The government says another terrorist plot has been uncovered and stopped. A U.S. citizen is in military custody suspected of trying to build a dirty bomb that could spread radioactivity. Abdullah Muhajir, also known as Jose Padilla, was arrested in Chicago in May. Attorney General John Ashcroft says Muhajir uh, is an al-Qaeda supporter who was plotting to build and set off the device possibly in Washington, D.C. There are no current plans to file U.S. criminal charges against Muhajir, but he can be held indefinitely as an enemy soldier. Governor Kenny Gwynn announced today Nevada is getting $10.5 million from the federal government to train for and detect biological, radioactive, or chemical attacks. Now, where's that money going to go? It will pay to train first responders like police, firefighters, and paramedics. A big chunk is going to go to the Clark County Health District to open the first major health lab in southern Nevada. Right now, complicated lab work has to go to a state facility in northern Nevada. I believe that today we are making history. This is the first time that the private sector, federal, state, and local governments have created a unified plan for responding to public health emergencies resulting from terrorism. State and federal officials say Nevada is one of the first states to get a grant from the Department of Health and Human Services. The Valley will also be getting its very own person in charge of homeland security. Captain Bill Conger is going to keep track of all terrorist-related information. Governor Kenny Gwynn is giving doctors, lawyers, and medical insurers a very strict deadline now. They have 45 days to agree on reforms to deal with Nevada's growing medical malpractice insurance crisis. If they do come up with a plan, Governor Gwynn says he will convene the legislature in a special one-day session to vote on it. Gwynn also says he wants Nevada to sue the Minnesota-based insurance company that sparked the crisis when it pulled out of Las Vegas and Nevada last December. Well, it has been weeks now since camp bus drivers walked off their jobs and onto the picket lines. Yeah, and this morning the strike entered its fourth week. Both sides still really unwilling to budge, leaving thousands of passengers paying the price. News 13's Kate Turner joins us now. And Kate, are they any closer tonight to resolving this? It doesn't look like it, Ross. And that, of course, is the bad news. ATC Vancom says they can't sit down with the union until they get a written proposal. But the union says they can't give ATC Vancom that written proposal that they have until they sit down with them. So it's a vicious circle that's leaving a lot of people stuck. Um, we are the union. We are the union. This is what it looked and sounded like on the picket line just three union. weeks ago. Mighty, mighty union. Today, you can see the strike is taking Not. its toll. <laughs> it's hot and it's we're sweaty and it's really rough, but we really feel strongly about what we're fighting for. Shame Come on, on I want to come to your house. Shame the strikers will tell you they didn't expect to be here going on four weeks. Our favorite it's not been easy. They're earning $100 a week from the strike fund. They and their families are the suffering. Fund. But most of the people out here have determined that they don't want to cross. What they'll do is they'll just take a part-time job, you know, plus get the strike. Fund. But they're not the only ones losing in this labor battle. The strike could end up costing ATC Vancom a pretty penny, too. According to their contract with the RTC, every time a route is missed, they face a $500 fine. And so far, it adds up fast, even when the best estimates have buses running at just 70%. I mean, it's, it's really not fair. But it's Abel Mendez and his fellow passengers who are, according yeah, to both sides, the innocent victims who may be suffering the most. They're stuck 
depending on a bus that because of the strike may never come. It's kind of harder now because what if you have to get to some place on time and, and you don't make it? I mean, it's, it's pretty hard. What you doing, what you doing here, man? And what if you were waiting, crossing your fingers that someone else's labor dispute wouldn't cost you your job? The company and their striking drivers say they're sorry for that, but they can't promise an end anytime soon. The only thing we want is a fair contract and uh, we'll be here for the duration. And of course, right now, it looks like that duration will be a long one. Both sides very far apart on this issue, and they have no new negotiations scheduled. Of course, they both say, well, they're willing if the other one would only fill certain requirements. Still now, no negotiations scheduled, so it could be a long time, and you could be waiting for that bus for quite a while. Reporting from the newsroom, Kate Turner, News 13, inside Las Vegas. Talks between the Culinary Union and eight downtown casino reps have will halt the major sticking point here of course health health care excuse me union workers want the same plan offered by mega resorts on the strip but downtown casino officials say the money just isn't there still union negotiators say downtown casinos do have the money for the same health care plan so 8,000 workers say they plan to strike if there's no agreement by july 1st but attorneys for downtown casinos say the union must start looking at alternatives. We are intent on negotiating a contract with the Culinary Workers Union. Uh, we're going forward with our counter proposals and we're, we're going to make those presentations. Attorneys for the downtown properties plan to meet with union officials again on Friday. The man accused of extortion and stalking Steve Wynn appeared in court today. Donald Eugene Phillips wants a court order to obtain the casino mogul's DNA. He says that he's Wynn's half-brother and therefore he's entitled to part of the family inheritance. Uh, well, as we stated in our opposition that he is, uh, at least Steve Wynn has testified that he does not know this individual. It's not his brother. Never met him before in his life. Phillips' bail was set at $500,000. He's set to go on trial next month. Former New York mob boss John Gotti has died. 61-year-old Gotti had been battling head, neck, and throat cancer for years now while in jail. He was serving a life sentence for several crimes, including murder and racketeering. Gotti, nicknamed the Teflon Don, was considered the nation's biggest mob boss since Al Capone. The monks at the Conception Abbey in rural Missouri say they don't know who the man is who killed two of their own today and then killed himself. Missouri police say a 71-year-old man killed two monks and hurt two others before committing suicide. Authorities say the shooter was found dead in a chapel with two weapons, an AK-47 and a sawed-off rifle. Firefighters in Colorado are giving up, trying to stop the wildfire that's so far burned 7,300 acres. Instead, what they're doing is they're concentrating on guarding dozens of homes threatened by those flames. The fire already destroyed two dozen homes and is covering the Denver area with a haze of yellow smoke. About 3,000 people are ordered to leave their homes. Officials say underground coal burning for years started that wildfire. Here in Nevada, people are being allowed back into their homes while firefighters try to gain control of a 1,500-acre wildfire in Lincoln County. 1,500 acres are burning in the mining town of Pioche. That's along the Utah border, 190 miles north of Las Vegas. 20 volunteer firefighters from Clark County are among the hundreds fighting the flames there. 300 people were evacuated from their homes. That is uh, half of the town's population. No homes destroyed yet, but the blaze has destroyed several outbuildings, abandoned cabins and vehicles. Right now, the fire is about 70% contained. Fire officials there expect to have it fully contained and put out by tomorrow night. That's a bizarre fire uh, because fire officials say a rodent in a power line started it. Mm, of course, the conditions were right for that blaze. It is so yeah. dry. It is tinder dry and the fire danger is listed as, as extreme all over the southwest, not just here in southern Nevada. And those mm -hmm. folks in Colorado, they got actually more than one fire. Besides that one in Glenwood Springs, there's mm -hmm. one actually a bit closer to the Denver area. But here we're also talking about that eclipse. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. Coming uh, up. It should start about 10 after 5. We want to make sure that as Brandon Rue was reporting, that you don't ever look directly at the sun, even for a second, because Dr. Pippin, the astronomer, was talking about the fact that you can permanently damage your eyes. Now, obviously, uh, Brandon was the fashion trendsetter there with his pink glasses, but you can also get one of these things. It is uh, the same sort of thing, the same sort of material that's in those glasses. It is called the Solar Eclipse Viewer, and you just look right through it, right up at the sun, and you should have a pretty good time. Meantime, we'll show you how clear, clear the sky is right now for watching the eclipse. Stratocam showing just a blue sky, and we want you to avoid eye injury. We're at 86 degrees officially at 4 o'clock. Humidity is at 14%. There's no wind 
region to speak of. The barometer is falling right now at 29.78. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed the weather the past couple of days just as much as we've enjoyed talking about it Man. with that wind that we thought we were going to get really uh, potential damage from over the yeah. weekend. It just was more the A annoying. A few gusts here and there. Yeah. And and then cool and lovely. Yeah, yeah. the overnight low is actually almost on the cool side, mid-60s, yeah. but we'll have that five-day forecast for you in a few minutes getting back to the triple digits. Where can you get these? Uh, this one we got at an astronomy supply store. Okay, so if you don't have one by now, just don't look up. It, probably. Get, <laughs> okay. get the old shoebox with the pinhole thing. There you go. Okay, yeah. neat. Thank you. Well, look for more labels on music CDs. That's right. One of the world's largest record companies is expanding its labeling so parents can check on what their kids are listening to. And a class action lawsuit against Ford and Bridgestone Firestone has been nixed. We'll tell you what Ford Explorer owners face next, coming up on News 13 at 4. But tonight on News 13 at 11, Metro has appointed one of its own to watch over Homeland Security right here in the Valley. We're going to meet the new man in charge tonight at 11 o'clock. And, of course, tonight's the big night, the big solar eclipse. If you don't have glasses, first of all, don't look, but don't worry as well. We're going to have it for you at uh, 11 o'clock tonight on News 13 at 11. Millions of Americans uh, are looking to sue Ford Motor and Bridgestone Firestone over faulty tires. Well, they've been denied again. They have a federal appeals court says no to a class action lawsuit. You know, over the past two years, Firestone recalled about 10 million tires amid lawsuits and government investigations. The class action lawsuit would have allowed plaintiffs all across the country to join a single lawsuit. And the Chrysler arm of Daimler Chrysler is recalling 157,000 Dodge Ram trucks, including the first recall of its 2002 Ram models. The reason? To fix their two separate problems happening here. 46,000 2002 Ram trucks have a potentially weak weld on a rear axle bracket. This affects only four-wheel drive models, we're told. The other recall is for 111,000 heavy-duty Ram trucks with diesel engines. These were built between 97 and 98. The the problem involves a fitting in the engine compartment that could corrode from road salt. Well now, some good news for parents uh, worried about what your kids are hearing on those music CDs. BMG Entertainment is expanding its CD advisory labeling. Additional labels will be added uh, classifying content under three different categories. Strong language, violent content, and sexual content. Some CDs may contain more than one label. The new advisories will affect U.S. releases of all BMG's record companies, including Arista, RCA, and J Records. The three largest online travel companies also offer the best airfares and service, it seems, at least according to a new Consumer Reports study. Expedia, Orbitz, and Travelocity ranked far better than their smaller competitors in ease of use and finding the greatest number of inexpensive flights. Searches on Expedia yielded the highest percentage of lowest fare flights. Travelocity and Orbitz performed better than their rivals in finding cheap and viable flight itineraries. News 13's Nate Tannenbaum is here once again now with a look at our longer range yeah. forecast. Five day. Yeah, no need to really want to travel away from here. It is just great. The tourists keep it coming. The temperature stays really, really nice. Uh, nothing but blue sky out there right now. Here are your 4 o'clock numbers one more time. We're holding at 86 degrees. Actually thought it would get a little bit warmer than that today because 86 was the high temperature yesterday. Right now, humidity 14%. No wind to speak of. The barometer that is dropping a little bit, 29.78. In fact, if we don't get much more than 86, well, you can tell that we're still about 10 degrees below the normal high for this time of year. As we get into the middle of June, yes, we're hanging right around 100, or normally we would be. Record high for this date, 108. So far, our current rating of 86 is the high for the day. Low this morning, a few degrees below normal at 65. Very comfortable. Sun doesn't go to bed till a few minutes before 8 and up at 523 tomorrow morning. Other numbers, the air quality is holding with a couple to moderate readings of dust and a couple of moderate readings of ozone, carbon monoxide is in the good category. So, what is the deal? Well, the low-pressure system that we thought would bring us even more damaging winds than we had over the weekend, it is still causing a lot of problems. You know what? There could be a half a foot of snow as that low-pressure system drags down cold air from Canada up in the mountains of western Montana and extreme northern Idaho. Otherwise, we are in the clear. We'll look upstream and find out if there is anything to be concerned about. 
There you get a better look at that low. Kind of thought it had moved even further east than uh, it has by now. Still kind of hanging out there over the northern Rockies. Just a patch or two of clouds here and there as the warming trend will get underway uh, during the day tomorrow and then as the rest of the week goes by. But again, it's going to be a fairly comfortable one. What do you say we check in on your family and friends across the nation? We talked about how the cold air has been reaching as far south as Ely. They started out in the 20s this morning. Salt Lake's at 65, 56 right now up in Helena. It is warmer in Wichita, Kansas than it is here in Las Vegas. Dallas is at 91, 73 for Chicago, 75 for St. Louis. But there are some intense storms going on all over the U.S.-Canadian border. And also as this front moves on down, a severe thunderstorm watches. That's what these yellow rectangles are over parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, into Nebraska, and also over the uh, North Dakota border with Minnesota. Otherwise, just scattered showers out ahead of this system down as far south as uh, New Orleans. Meantime, the Nate cast for the rest of tonight, simple, enjoy. You'll wake up in the mid-60s one more time as the new moon lasts for another day or so. Generally calm conditions. Now, during the day tomorrow, should be a little bit warmer than it was today. In fact, potentially 10 degrees warmer. And the normal high, you remember, is 98. But today, we've only been in the middle 80s. i got a feeling some neighborhoods will be in the upper 90s tomorrow. The UV index, that's a 9. That's still the high category. Even if it's cooler, you can still get burned in a hurry if you don't put on the sun protection. South breeze is uh, tomorrow afternoon, maybe to 15. Excellent boating conditions out at the lake. You should be hitting triple digits with just a few breezes from the south to 15, waking up very comfortably around 70. And you're heading up to the mountain. Really not that much heat to avoid. In fact, it's going to be chilly up there, reaching the upper 30s tonight with generally calm wind during the day tomorrow reaching into the low 70s now the next five days for us uh, let's see we've got 94 tomorrow 97 Wednesday triple digits on Thursday and 101 on Friday the reason we have the flag there it's one of the little known holidays here in our country it is flag day on Friday we should be at triple digits into the weekend all righty Nate thanks so much you, hey, are welcome. you like Paul McCartney you appreciate Maybe his... Maybe not as much as you do, but I do <laughs> like him. I think Guy, our son, likes him. Well, there you go. Mixed emotions. This is, mm. this is really lovely. It's been a long and winding road for Sir Paul. All right, get out the handkerchief now. <laughs> but, it, but it's going to end with wedding vows tomorrow at a romantic Irish castle. Up next, the former Beatle and his bride-to-be handle the media circus. Sports with Ron Futrell. Brought to you by the Desert Automotive Group and their 11 dealerships. You know, it's pretty tough hiding a big secret when you're a former member of the world's best-known yeah. rock band. Yeah, fans and media descended on a remote Irish castle today where ex beatle Paul McCartney and fiancé Heather Mills will exchange their wedding vows tomorrow. Rumors were swirling that the couple would wed first on Long Island, then it was India, then it was Scotland, but when the white tents were spotted lakeside at Castle Leslie in Ireland, the word got out. Happy couple faced the cameras, jokingly trying to pacify the throng gathered outside the 17th century castle. It is tomorrow. <laughs> It's a secret. But it's a secret. <laughs> All right. I'm not supposed to tell anybody anything. Sir Paul gave his bride to be a kiss and a single ro red rose, and that drew <laughs> cheers from hundreds of fans. Among those expected for tomorrow's nuptials are the legendary guitarist Eric Clapton, fellow Beatle Ringo Starr is supposed to be there, John Eastman as well. He's the brother of Paul's late wife, Linda Eastman. And apparently everybody can take pictures if you donate like $1,500 to yeah. their favorite charity. Absolutely. They said, go ahead, take photographs. And we'll see them all, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Before we go, we want to recap our top stories. A former Chicago street gang member is accused of a bomb plot in our nation's capital. Take a look. Abdullah al-Muhajir is being held in South Carolina. He's accused of being linked to al-Qaeda and planning to build and detonate a radioactive device in Washington, a dirty bomb. There are no plans, however, to press charges against him. The federal government is giving Nevada $10.5 million to detect and train for biological or chemical attacks. And we're one of the first states to get a grant for this purpose. Governor Kenny Gwynn says the money will go to train police and firefighters, doctors and nurses to recognize and deal with that kind of attack. Talks between downtown casino lawyers and culinary and bartenders union officials are not going well. The sticking point remains health care coverage. Culinary officials want the same deal given to strip casino workers. Downtown casino reps say they don't have the money that the strip casinos do. Workers would still be able to strike if they chose after the July 1st deadline. And the solar eclipse, what time again? Starts in about 15 minutes. It peaks at 10 after 6. Make sure you don't look directly at the sun, though, without those little things. That's right. We'll see you back here at 11 right after the rich man's wife. Have a great night. We'll see you at 11.